everyone, welcome to Hot Park. My name is Marcella and today I'll be taking us on a virtual tour of Hot Park's newest theme garden, The Rock Garden. Let's go! Today we're going to be meeting a friend and colleague of mine, Yan Ling from the Horticulture team. She's the one behind the magic we're about to check out. Hopefully, we can also get an exclusive on the behind the scenes. Yan Ling! Yan Ling! Hi! Hi! Hi, welcome to The Rock Garden. Thank you for having me today. Before we start, can I just say, wow, this place is seriously amazing. Can you give me an overview? Sure. As the name suggests, the Rock Garden features a unique landscape where you walk through canyon-like paths surrounded by rocks. And blended into this rock landscape is a showcase of what people tend to oversee, which is the minute detailing of each and every plant that makes them unique. So you could say that this garden is very much a celebration of plant forms. And the plants in this collection have been curated into three main zones, the canyon, Boulder Valley, and the grotto. Shall we head on in? Yes, of course. Okay. Over here in Zone 1, which is the canyon, you will be able to find plants with unique shaped forms. As you can see, some of them resemble creatures, like this duck's foot tree, which has leaves that looks like a duck's foot. And over here, you have a colocasia that looks like an elephant's ear. You also have the Kodayan mother and daughter, which has leaves that look like mini spoons that you take your cough syrups from. Oh my gosh, that's so cute! <laughs> yeah, if you think that's interesting, wait till you see the second zone. Lead the way. Okay, come. Okay, so now let's make our way across the stone bridge to zone 2, which is the Boulder Valley. So this zone shines a spotlight on plants that have spiky, pointy or twisted leaves and stems, like this pink rose cactus, which has a spiky stem, and this plant which looks like a Christmas holly. And over here, you have the terminalia, which looks like a DNA track. There are also plants that have pointed leaves, but are not sharp or spiky, like the euphobia over here. And you also have the tapeworm plant, which looks like a seaweed. Oh, what about the twisty plants? Oh yeah, so over here, we have a plant with a twisted seed pod. You also have this croton, which has curly leaves. There is also the euphobia, which is also known as a zigzag plant because of its zigzag stem. Actually, there are quite a few species in one space. Can you tell me what got you started on this project in the first place? So I love to sketch botanical drawings in my free time. And when you do botanical drawings, you study the form of the plant down to its minute details. So that inspired me to create this garden to share my love for such details. That's pretty cool. Mm, I also noticed that you have quite a few unique looking rocks. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, so my second love is rocks. Mm. Oh, I see. Mm, will you consider yourself a hardcore rocker? Okay, never mind. Rocks are useful in creating texture and depth in the landscape. I love the idea of naturalized vegetation growing on rock cliffs. So that's what I tried to play around and recreate in this garden. By creating this mini cliffs topography, it also elevates these plants' forms to various eye levels. This way, both children and adults are able to enjoy a similar experience. Wow, that's actually a lot of work gone into creating just one garden. You even have the cobblestone paths. Yeah, so I wanted to create a sort of inviting aspect whereby people not only visually see textures on the slope, but they're also able to feel textures beneath them as they walk through the garden. Nice, so I guess that brings us to zone 3? Yeah, that's right. So over here in our final zone, which is the grotto, it features plants which have plant parts with a droopy hanging form. You have the madalina, which has droopy flowers hanging down. And you also have the hibiscus, which has flowers that droop downwards. There is also the ilang ilang tree, which has droopy yellow flowers. And to create that naturalized cliff look, I use a mixture of climbers such as the nung noch vine, with its trumpet-like yellow flowers, and the Cissus quadrangularis, which looks like a series of tubes joined together, trailing downwards. And that's it for this garden. That was quite a workout. Thanks, Yan Ling, for giving us this exclusive tour of the rock garden, as well as sharing with us what goes on behind the scenes of this garden scheme. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed this garden, and I hope visitors will enjoy it too. I'm sure they will. And thank you for joining us today on this virtual tour of Hot Park's rock garden. We hope that you will come down to enjoy this amazing space as well as the other themed gardens here at Hot Park. Bye! Bye.